Negative space. Look at all this negative space. What, what? Yeah, I thought I'd try doing the vlogs this way. Plus, I don't know, it just looks better than me awkwardly sitting perfectly center in front of the camera. So let's try it this way. Mix things up, be original, be different. And I'm not completely through my current disc of hair but I figured, you know what? I have some time on my hands. I don't know when I'm gonna have some spare time again. So without further ado, here we go. So first episode, kicking it off, it's the spelling bee. In this episode, it's the big spelling bee at Arnold's school. And there's a lot, everyone's done really hard. And ultimately there's like two people who are poised to win this thing. Our hero, Arnold, or Helga. And Helga's under a lot of pressure to win because her sister won the spelling bee and it was for the specific word with a silent letter. I'm completely blanking on the name right now. I'll have to like, hopefully I'll remember to look it up actually. So Arnold's studying really hard. So we come to the big day, it's the big spelling bee. And of course it narrows down to Arnold and Helga. And before Arnold can, and you know, start the final round, Helga's father comes up to him and bribes him saying, hey, if you forfeit the game so my daughter can win, I'll give you this money. And earlier we had set up that Arnold wanted, because there's prize money involved in the spelling bee and, and with, and Arnold wanted to use the prize money to buy this cool boom box. So Arnold was tempted, is tempted, but because he's Arnold, he forfeits. And then Helga finds out that Arnold, not only did he forfeit the match, but he forfeited the match because her father was bribing him. And Helga is like heartbroken because her father, she's heartbroken because her father would, didn't believe in her and he felt that in order for Helga to win, to ensure Helga could win, he had to cheat. So Helga decides to forfeit as well. And completely messes up the word, the same word that her sister messed up deliberately, and Arnold wins, Helga wins, and yeah, it's a really solid episode. And was I the only one during this episode that was thinking of that Brian Regan sketch, Stupid in School? If you don't know it, look it up, it's hilarious. But it's a really good episode at just showing, like, how, yeah, when you're a kid, things seem easy, you get to go to school, study, and playground and even looking back like I'm like oh man wouldn't it be awesome to be a kid again having computer lab gym class art music but in reality looking back there was a lot of stress a lot of pressure and spelling was really hammered in like I think that's the only time in school where you're where they legit were like hey you got to know your spelling I mean it's important in anything heck even today I'm still watching my spelling but like, I remember, like, in elementary school, we'd have entire, like, 20, 30-minute sessions just devoted to spelling out words, tests, or we had to spell the words. I had to write them out, like, three times to help me remember. I remember first grade, teacher would shout out a word, had to write it on the whiteboard, hold it up. Ah, good times. And so this episode did a really good job at capturing that stress that school puts you under. And more specifically, the pressure our parents can sometimes put us under duo, which comes through Helga and her relationship with her father. And I really love this episode because, again, I like like Helga can just be sometimes she can just be grouchy and very formulaic in how she's written. Like it's basically like there's some writers where they'll just writers like they'll over emphasize her anger. It's like, okay, we just need to have Helga act really angry and occasionally say something sweet about Arnold. And there's a bit more to Helga than that. And I love any time we just dig deeper and say, no, there's a bit more to Helga than just simply having a crush on Arnold and, and hiding those feelings for anger. And this kind of alludes to something we get a bit more of in the next episode, in a later episode, Olga Comes Home, which I already talked about. But hey, you know what? These episodes are pretty interchangeable and they introduced us to Arnold's apartment after we, long after we'd met everyone's, but I digress. So, you know, we meet her family. Her dad's obviously this big, successful businessman. And her sister is also this really successful person. So there's this pressure for Helga to live up to that. And 
I think, and again, part of just being roughed on all the time, I think that sort of has gotten her the frustration, and it comes through. Here, I mean, her father, like, shows her all the trophies of Olga, and it also shows us... keeps telling her the story over and over again about how Olga won, and there's a bit of a resentment, and again, I'm, I had touched on this a bit when I talked about Olga comes home, but yeah, there is that bit of, uh, I'm, blah, 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 blah. you know, like, resentment, like, you know, the pressure to live up to your sibling, the envy that your siblings have it all, and again, we get a bit of that here. And as for the actual spelling bee, it was pretty relatable. Again, I this I like this better than the Tudor episode because this you can actually sort of follow along. You can sort of guess the spellings of the words. And onomatopoeia. That up that word has been brought up so many times. I think by now everyone knows how to spell it. And it was a pretty suspenseful spelling bee. I'm you're, I'm on the edge of my seat trying to guess the spellings along with them. I feel really bad for Eugene because he got hurt in this episode. There was that one kid who somehow was cheating. That was amusing. But the emotional stuff is what really, really worked here. Like, like I love how the resolution here is both characters sort of forfeited something. You had Arnold who, you know, both... Helga and Arnold had something they wanted to do and something they needed to. In both cases, both characters wanted to win. And... Winning would be this selfish thing, like, because you don't want to win. Both, uh, 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 sorry, I'm blanking out. But as I was saying, both characters were faced with two options, the selfish option and the right option. And in both cases, they, in both cases, they go with the right option, which in Arnold's case is to forfeit the match and not forfeit the match. Um, wait, why did I say forfeit the match? What I meant was to spell it right and not take the money. And in Helga's case, it was to forfeit the match and let Arnold win to bring her father down a notch. And, and it was nice to see, like, everyone in character in Strong Realist, especially after Cool Jerk, where I thought Arnold acted a bit out of character. And, you know... And this theme of fairness is more important than the reward. And it's risk losing for what's right. And, you know, I like how they did that message, but they didn't particularly hammer in or spell out, here's what the message is. It's like, they trust you. They trust that you're smart enough to deduce, like, what the message is. And they're... And in general, like, everyone worked. Like, Grandpa was giving her all the emotional sort jail, despite spiting Arnold, saying, I'm not coming in on a Saturday! He came in and supported him. I mean, I'm a little... a little... baffled as to why this is set in, like, a public theater, but I... again, I live in the suburbs, not the city, so... who knows how they do it there. Then the next episode is another big one. It's Pigeon Man. Now... In this episode, it's about Arnold. He's using a pigeon system to send letters to people and to let him know to hang out because we don't have texting yet and for whatever reason he doesn't want to use the phone. And it's going well until one of his pigeons sort of bites it. And Arnold notices the pigeon has a broken wing and he decides, and, you know, we could take it to the vet or we could go into another urban legend, which is what we do. In that case, he takes it to the Pigeon Man, this guy who lives all alone, cooped up on the roof, surrounded by a bunch of pigeons. And Arnold spends some time with him, and it turns out that, hey, you know what? This Pigeon Man's not so bad. He's actually a nice guy. And he takes him out. They have a lunch to get, at least I think it's lunch. And while they're gone, the other kids are like, hey, Arnold's gone. Let's go trash the place. And then they trash it, make a mess, and then Pigeon Man decides to move on. And But he's like, you know, Arnold, you encouraged me to move on. And this is one of the stronger episodes of Arnold, because it deals with a lot of heavy stuff, specifically the idea of prejudice, judging other people based on their appearances. And, 
you know, out of all the like urban legends that we've had on the show, this is the one I felt was the strongest because it wasn't the typical formula. I mean, it was the what not what they seen, but it wasn't in service of horror. Or, there's no legend, or is there? No, there's legit a person. It's just you know this legend had been built around of him and stories to the point where the truth about him had actually got destroyed, which is kind of how Bridges works. It's like we know people, but we don't know know them. And I thought this was a really, really good way to get that across. And, I mean, even to the point where I'm willing to overlook how repetitive the character arcs are, because here's the thing. There are so many times in the show where a problem comes up, all the kids want to just forfeit, take the easy route, be judgmental, but Arnold's the empathetic one. He's always like, no, let's go through this. Let's give this a chance and let's just do the right thing. I'm going to do the right thing, even if everyone else agrees with me. And you'd think after, like, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so episodes of this happening, you'd think people would be like, hey, you know what, Arnold was right, like, the last dozen times. Maybe for once we should listen to him, and maybe that'll happen, but I doubt it, because the thing is, is that this show was made during the 90s, and nothing against 90s television. It was great. I love a lot of it. But it's very different from now, because then it's like you'd have... Characters wouldn't grow or change. I mean, there would be some growth, some change, some progression, but for the most part, it would just be the same scenarios over and over, you know, the characters reacting to them in the same ways. And even though they're faced with them multiple times, like, they always react to them the same way. And it is a little frustrating, particularly now, when so many shows are just... You know. Not, but... You know, I'm willing to overlook it because it often leads to a lot of great storytelling. Like here. Although I am curious in the Jungle movie coming up if we're going to have some progression. Like for once, if people are going to believe in Arnold. Or like, you know what, Arnold? You've been right before. You'll be right this time. We're behind you for once. But I'm getting ahead of myself. As far as atmosphere goes, there was some really great atmosphere in this episode. I love the build-up as they recite the legend. I, you know, we make it larger than life, and I love some of the surreal imagery that happens while the kids are reciting the legend of the Birdman. And it lives up to it. There's some great storyboarding here. I mean, the animation's been a little inconsistent. Like, some episodes in this season have looked really, really, really good. Like, great use of lighting, great use of shadows. And then there's some episodes that look like they were done by a different studio. The character movements are a little more stiff and stilted and awkward, and there's not as much detail or dynamic shots. Again, it could be just me, but I've seen some of these episodes back to back, and anyway, and but anyway, the animation's in top form. The shot of him standing in front of the building looking up, you have like top corner where the building is, surrounded in darkness, right around all light, some brilliant contrast. And even when he goes inside, you know, the corridors are big. You can see the shadow. It reminds me of Beauty and the Beast, where, they, where when you go inside Beast Castle, and everything there is just so much larger than life. And again, it's surprisingly heartbreaking. Like, it's a little heartbreaking when the kids make a mess of things, even if it, they didn't meet, if, even if they only meant to just make a little mess, not in a big, big mess. We have Arnold standing up for it's right. And yeah, it was a really good episode. Now, before I go, I want to quickly talk about the ending because I kind of accidentally stumbled upon this episode online because there's this crazy theory going around that at the end when Pigeon Man gathers all his birds and he flies off into the sunset that he actually committed suicide and that Arnold's just remembering it differently as a way of coping with it. And... To that I say, no. I mean, first off, I don't need Craig Bartlett to come out and confirm that that's not how it was meant to be interpreted, although although it is greatly appreciated. What I do need is, but just from watching it, like, nothing about it says that he's committing suicide. Like, I mean, it's not like Birdman's ending, which, skip ahead like 10, 15, 20 seconds, if you don't want a Birdman spoiler, but in Birdman, like, at the end, when he jumps off the building and it's unclear if, like, 
he flew off or if he just committed suicide because we have the shot of him still and looking down and looking up and it could be her just grieving it could be her realizing something but it's hard to tell and i don't think so because from the way he was talking it was very clear that he was just going somewhere else like he'd spent his whole life sheltered up because everyone thought he was the weird kid he had this unique gift which is this knowledge and care for birds and no one really seemed to give him credit and for it or appreciate it so what he did was he sheltered himself and then arnold came out and proved that yes there are people like harold and the gang who are just jerks who are just going to do stuff because they can and judge them out but there's also people like arnold people who see the good in people people who work hard people who are willing to make that effort to get to know people and not just straight up judge them. And that gave him hope to say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe there there is a place out there where everyone's accepting. And, you know, maybe I should not stay here cooped up. I should go out there, put myself out there, and break this stereotype. And that, to me, is what they do. And who knows, maybe he'll show up in the Jungle movie to just confirm all that that crazy theory is wrong. And a couple little things before I move on. One is, is that at one point in this episode, someone says this is the 20th century. I'm like, irony, the show is made in the 90s. The second, the whole bit with the birds on the roof, that for whatever reason, that reminded me of Lawrence Fishburne's character in John Wick 2. And... That's all I'm going to say for right now. I have a bit more I want to talk about, but this video is getting kind of long, so I'll just stop it for now. And you can let me know what you thought of these episodes and comment below, let me know, and as always, like, comment, and subscribe. So until then, JSTARS60 signing out.